Good evening. The, the focus of our discussion this week is uh, to be on respectfulness. It's interesting to me that uh, God puts a great deal of emphasis on respect. I don't know if you've ever thought about it or not, but I think as our, as our creator, he understands how important respect is. And let me expand on this a little bit to get the discussion going this evening. Um, when you look at his word, when you look at the law, in the Ten Commandments, for instance, the first four commandments all have to do with showing respect for God in one form or another, whether it's not worshiping any other gods besides him, or not taking his name in vain, or observing the day that he has set aside to observe. I mean, we show respect for him when we do that. And that's immediately followed by a fifth commandment, which has to do with the fact that children are to respect their parents. Um, as you look in the law, the law is very specific about how the people to, were to respect the, the gray head when you move to the New Testament. Paul, for instance, in Romans chapter 13, is going to talk about how important it is that we respect governmental authorities. The fact of the matter is that society, uh, the family, the church, really can't function properly if there's not an understanding of the hierarchical structure in each of those and the respect that goes with that. God created the family for Christ, remember Ephesians 5, to be the head and then the husband and then the wife and then the kids. That's the hierarchy. That's, that's the structure that's placed there. In the church, you have the elders and evangelists and, and deacons and, and so on, and you have a certain hierarchy. In government, you have that hierarchy. And it's important that those roles be respected and recognized. Because if they're not, honestly, what you end up is kind of what we're seeing today, which is chaos. Uh, we have got several generations now that have been raised and not taught to respect anybody or anything. Not their parents, not their teachers, certainly not God. And I think that's one of the reasons why we find our prisons filled to record levels. Because here's what happens. When you have people who aren't taught respect, in reality, I believe what you're doing is creating barbarians. And those barbarians are going to create chaos. The only way that a society, a culture, can cope with barbarians is to incarcerate them, to tuck them away from society, to protect the rest of society. In a sense, to strong arm them in defense. And that's exactly what's happening. The sad thing is that what we're doing, as usual, unfortunately, is dealing with symptoms rather than the bottom line problem. And the bottom line problem is that our people are not, in this country, are not being taught respect. I mean, today, who do people respect? They don't respect the president. They don't respect their senators or their representatives. Uh, they don't respect their teachers. They don't respect their parents. Uh, it's a mess. If children were taught to respect, if, if adults practiced respect, I believe it would make all the difference in the world in this country. But that's not happening. But I believe God understands and sees how important respect is, and that's why he emphasizes it, and that's why we need to emphasize it. Now, a second corollary to that is uh, when you talk about respect, I think uh, a word that you can use that isn't exactly parallel but comes close is politeness. And I really believe that politeness is incredibly important in 
securing and developing and maintaining relationships and in fact in, in, in just people getting along. It's interesting that in Far Eastern or Near, Near Eastern cultures, uh, politeness is very, very important. And now there are people who say, well, you know, but that's artificial and that's structured and that's surface. And I wouldn't disagree with that. But I would argue that it's incredibly important in a very valuable way. If two individuals come in and they're rivals and they're crossways with each other and at cross purposes and, and they're angry, but they come in and they sit down and because of cultural norms, they're polite and they treat each other with respect. Now, maybe begrudging, but nevertheless, that's the way it goes. There's a whole lot more possibility that something can peacefully be worked out. There's a lot more possibility that they're going to cooperate instead of confront if there's this atmosphere of respect and politeness that's there. You toss that out, and it's going to be a dogfight, isn't it? And so politeness is, I believe, kind of, some have called it the grease that allows relationships to function smoothly. And I wouldn't disagree with that at all. And it's very important that we respect one another, and I believe along with that, that we treat one another politely. This really holds true in marriage. It holds true in dealing with our children. Uh, it holds true in dealing with each other, that we be respectful and that we be polite. And, and, and one last thought, and I think it's a very important one, and that is everybody needs to be treated just as respectfully and politely as we possibly can. Um, we all want to be respected, don't we? We all like it when people treat us politely because that says, if you'll think about it, that says, you know, I value you. You have value. To me you're you're important to me and that means a lot um, when we go out to prison all the folks who go out from here i've watched them and i try to do the same thing i try to be as polite to those inmates as i can be as respectful to them as i can be i realize they're incarcerated i realize they've gotten themselves in trouble but they deserve to be treated politely they need to be treated respectfully and they respond to that because in too many cases that's not how they're treated and we all need to have this sense of value and the fact that we're being valued and that certainly holds true in marriage for instance um, one of the things that I think is really important is that husbands and wives treat each other with respect that they be polite to each other um, you can listen to two people talk to each other for a little bit, I can, and I can tell what kind of relationship they've got. And it's not a healthy one if they're talking each other down and constantly confronting each other. That respect and that politeness is very important. And so it is in our relationships with each other as brothers and sisters in Christ. Romans 2.11 says that God's no respecter of persons. Now, that doesn't mean that He doesn't and hasn't constructed, again, a hierarchical structure in various parts of our, of our society, because he has. But that doesn't mean that he shows preference for one over another. He doesn't. And in the same sense, I believe, his word makes very clear that we need to treat each other with respect. In James chapter 2, James talks about a poor man coming into the assembly and a rich man coming into the assembly. And he's saying, now don't you start treating disrespectfully the poor man even as you treat respectfully the wealthy man. That's wrong. Don't do that. And that's absolutely true. Everyone that meets together in the Fort Gibson Church of Christ, every member of the Fort Gibson Church of Christ, needs to be treated with the respect that is their due as a special creation of God. We need to be polite to one another. That opens all kinds of doors that facilitates relationships, that facilitates communication. It just, makes, it just makes everything better. And so may God bless you in your discussion of respect and respectfulness. 
this evening because it really is something that's very important and that we need to work on. Thank you. God bless you. In our hearts alone.